Hey YouTube, what's happening? Chris from Versus 3D. Guess where I am? 3D Printing Canada. Today we are not doing a fusion video. Yes, I finally have something different to do. I get to unbox a printer. Score. Anyway, Creality has stepped their game into the resin printing arena and they released this Creality LD001. We are gonna open it and set it up. Are you excited? I'm kind of excited. You should be excited, because I'm excited. Anyway, let's open it and see what it looks like. All right, here we are. We have a box. I have a box cutter. I'm going to use the box cutter and cut the box, or the tape at least, on the box. With me so far? Excellent. In here we have packaging. Excited yet? Ooh. Packaging. What do we got in here? We got some stuff. We might as well show you. This appears to be the printer. This appears to be a box of accessories. Let's take them out and see. I'm a good guesser usually. I'm gonna put this down and Hey, I was right, it's a printer. It's packaged really nice. It's nice to see people actually package things well. Well, that didn't help. Under here. Very light, which is nice. All right, here we go. We have some uh, acrylic protection here. I didn't get all of it, I don't care. And the screen protector. I have a thing, I can't have screen protectors on anything like this, the film, I can't have it. Some people leave it there until it gets all like old and crappy and like peels off, I can't have that. All right, we open it up. Oh, there's more, it's very protected. Probably be smart for me to actually take this off and do this, but I'm not gonna. My OCD will kick in and I'll have to take that off, but not right now. All right, and I know hiding in here is the build plate. The build plate is not metal like on the D7. It's acrylic, maybe, kind of what it looks like. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, yeah, that's how it goes in. There we go. All right, let's see what's in the box. Accessories, I knew it. All right. A guidebook. 
Huh, all kinds of accessories here. We have a scraper, a paintbrush, SD, oh, not an SD card, uh, a USB flash drive. These are actually funnels, which I thought was really nice that they included. Um, they're just paper funnels, but they're filters. So when you use the resin, you can actually filter your resin and put it back in the bottle. And the one thing that I did notice when I was looking at the specs online, I'm actually gonna take this back out because it's in my way. Um, the resin vat is actually designed to help you pour the resin out easily, right here, which that's nice. So let's see what else we have here. Paintbrush, this is just to kind of clean off your models and the build plate. They give you a couple pairs of gloves, extra screws, or maybe they're not extra, maybe I need them. The rest of your tools. They give you a couple of masks. Maybe they can keep you safe from Ebola, I don't know. And then this is an extra piece. Uh, this actually looks like an empty bag, it's not. It's an extra piece of the, Epi, the FEP film that goes on the bottom of the resin vat. And it looks like 250 mils of, re, 250 grams of resin. And there's no checkbox on what color it is, so I have no idea. I don't know. And the power supply and the standard Creality scraper. This is only to scrape parts off here. This one, the plastic one, is to clean off here. Don't use this one on here. So here's all the parts. Let's plug it in. Okay, so here we go, we're gonna fire it up. And it does take a minute. There is a notice up here, please keep the screen clean. That means keep the screen clean. And Creality wants to be the chief evangelist. So a couple things about this printer. I'm using a cheat sheet right here. Um, it is basically the same uh, build volume as like a D7 or a Photon. Uh, it's 120 by 70 by 120. Um, pretty standard. I mean, this is your build platform, but it's resin. A lot of times you don't want a giant machine. You want something little. And the great thing about DLP printers is unlike uh, you know, any other Creality printer, any other FDM printer, uh, layers don't matter as far as how much space on the build platform you use. It projects the whole layer and cures it, pulls up, goes back down and cures the next layer and like this. I look really stupid doing this, but yeah. Anyway, it goes down, it cures, it comes back up, cures the entire layer at once. You know what I mean. All right, let's look at the screen. So we can go into settings. One thing I did notice about this machine when I was plugging it in, to my delight and surprise, it's got an ethernet port in the back so you can connect it to your network because apparently the software, which I have not looked at yet because it's on this USB stick, um, is uh, everything is over the network, fancy. It also, if you hit the settings button, has Wi-Fi. So you can actually just connect to your home Wi-Fi network. And as far as I understand, you basically just push the software, or you push your print right over the network. If you don't wanna do that, you can use a USB stick. So I'm gonna back out of, well, I'm not yet. You can actually, uh, just move the z-axis up and down, 10 or one millimeter, 10 or 50. And I've pressed it a few times. Okay, now it's done. I'm gonna go back home and let's see what the system says. So we can do a screen test. And what that does is it basically just 
turns the lights on and it works. Information. Okay. Also, the good thing about it being networked is if there are software updates, I'm guessing you can install them over the network or Creality might push them. Don't know. Let's press the print button and see what happens. Hopefully nothing, but... Oh, we can print a fang. I'm not going to hit print though because that would be silly because there's no resin and there's no build plate. And I haven't leveled it yet. And I think that's about it. Let's see, what is it? I'll give you the requirements. What does it need? So you can print over USB or Wi-Fi. Uh, like I said, it is uh, 120 by 70 by 120. It does 20 millimeters an hour. So that's actually pretty good. The software does require Windows. That's probably all the exciting information. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna level the bed. Seems pretty simple. Let's see if I can actually do it. All right, so what we do is we're gonna unscrew the, the resin vat and just slide it out, move it out of the way. Now, if you're familiar with the way the D7 works, this is pretty similar. Uh, you basically just unscrew these four bolts just loosen them up so the vat, so the build plate moves up and down freely. We're gonna just screw that right into its position and lock it down. All right, then we are going to take a piece of paper. I had to cut it, it's not straight, see? We're gonna slide that right over the screen and then we are gonna go to settings and zero. And there we go, it's at zero. So, there's some tension there. This is actually, wow, this is actually really easy to level. So basically you want some good tension there. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten up those four bolts. But the weight of the build platform itself is doing a great job. That's the wrong way. The one thing I will say the negative on this is it's difficult to do this with Allen wrenches because of the way it's built. But I don't feel like this is one that you're going to have to level every print. And there we go, so it's level, nice and snug. I can feel the tension is nice and even through the whole thing, which is what you want. So now I'm just gonna move it up, 10. Get that paper out of there. Now I'm gonna move it up even higher. So we'll do 50 up. And then the resin bat will go back in. It doesn't actually stop. There's nothing stopping the vat from going in. So there's these two little uh, indents in the vat, like so. So you basically just slide it in so it looks right and then tighten down and with any luck, you've hit it in the right spot. Apparently it's much easier to, look, to figure it out if you're looking down at it. Score. Another good way to tell is if you look down from the top, the build platform is centered. All right, so overall, I think this is a decent little printer. Um, I really like the fact that you can network it either through cable or Wi-Fi, the fact that you can print via USB. Uh, I really do enjoy the leveling system other than the fact that it's tough to get in. I'm okay with that if that's the worst thing I can complain about. Um, I like the touch screen. I like the fact that you can at least somewhat see through the, the acrylic. It's a nice build. I mean, it's not super heavy. 
I enjoy it. I may have to have one. So I'm looking forward to doing a couple of test prints on it and coming back and reporting, making another video on the test prints. So uh, for now, I am going to just say, hey, don't forget to give the video one of these and not one of these. Everyone does it when I say that. I'm going to get all of these. Um, and then click the subscribe wherever it is and ring the bell because then you'll get notified when the video for the uh, first print comes out and other videos too because we make videos and uh, all that good stuff. So anyway, until then, have a good night. This is Chris from Versus 3D at 3D Printing Canada and we'll see you soon.